Oops. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. My name is Abbas Sadat. I'm a research scientist at Uber ETG. In this session, my colleague Wen Yun and I will talk about the last steps of the autonomy pipeline, motion planning and control. We start with the problem formulation, then talk about the traditional methods of motion planning for self-driving. And in the second part, we focus on learning-based planning. In the previous sessions, you learned how a self-driving vehicle can perceive the surrounding environment and predict the future state of the actors. In motion planning, the goal is to control the ego vehicle to reach the des desired destination in a safe, comfortable, law-abiding, and efficient manner. For this problem, the planner is given the perceived and predicted state of the world, the map, and the requested destination. The output trajectory is then executed by the controller. In traditional approaches, this problem is normally decomposed hierarchically into simpler subproblems of route, behavior, and trajectory plan. Next, we take a look at each subproblem. The goal of the route planning is to find a high-level route in the, net, in the road network from the current location of the self-driving vehicle to the destination location. In the simplest case, the objective is to find the shortest path from A to B on the map. If available, traffic information can be used to update the cost of traversing each road to find the fast, fastest route to destination. It is also possible to limit the types of maneuvers to the available capabilities of the SDV, for example, by assigning infinite cost to unprotected left turns. To increase robustness, rather than one route, we can find the K-based route. This allows real-time switching from one route to another in case the initial route is blocked, for example, by construction. Popular approaches for route planning includes Digestra's algorithm and ASTAR. After the route is planned, the rest of the motion planning pipeline makes sure that the SDV progresses on the route, taking into account the static and dynamic driving context. For this, the planner first decides on a high-level behavior that describes the set of desired trajectories. This narrows down the search for the optimal trajectory in the subsequent step, for example, by imposing spatial temporal constraints on the position of the SDV or adjusting the objective function. As an example, in the image on the left, the stop behavior represents trajectories that come to a stop before the parked vehicle. The squeeze behavior describes slow, careful driving that passes the vehicle. Also, the SDV can yield to the pedestrian and hence stop before the crosswalk or try to clear the intersection before the pedestrian gets close to the lane. All these behaviors can be translated to spatial temporal constraints or objective function in the trajectory planning step. Furthermore, the behavior can hold the long-term intention of the SDV, which can be used to control the left-right signals, as an example. Two popular behavior planning methods are finite state machines and corridor planning. In the final state machine approach, the states correspond to various behaviors and the SDV can transition from one behavior to another based on the perceived driving context, such as distance to the lead vehicle or distance to the route. Such an approach can lead to complex transition graphs as each driving situation needs to be explicitly handled and hence novel scenarios can yield unexpected outcomes. A more general approach for behavior decision-making is to find an optimal driving corridor, which specifies free space regions that the SDV should drive within over the planning horizon. These regions are usually defined 
by how obstacles should be passed or which vehicles the SDB should follow or stay ahead of. A simple approach is to assume that the vehicle is following a fixed a priori path, for example, the center line of the lane. Then a corridor can be defined by a velocity profile along this path, indicating whether the SDB passes a blocking obstacle before or after it blocks the path. The, pa the blocking decision is based on the distance of the obstacle to the path. Another approach is to first plan a path that enables nudging around a static obstacle so that the STB is not stuck behind an encroaching parked vehicle. Given the new optimal path, a velocity profile is planned as before to find the, the driving corridor. Although this approach can greatly improve the robustness of planning and enables human-like driving, the path and the velocity profile are optimized separately, which can lead to suboptimal behavior decisions. A better way is to use the full trajectory representation where the path and the velocity can be simultaneously optimized. This approach not only leads to natural driving decisions, but also leads to behaviors that can be achieved by the subsequent trajectory plan. We will come back to this point later in the presentation. The output behavior is passed to the next step of the planning, which is trajectory generation. The goal of this step is to find a drivable trajectory for the vehicle that is locally optimal with respect to a given cost function and achieve the high level behavioral decision from the previous step. Two popular ways of trajectory planning are continuous optimization and sampling based method. In optimization-based trajectory planning, the objective function is created based on the selected behavior. The decision variables in such optimizations can either be the state of the vehicle or the control commands. In the former case, also known as co-location methods, the optimization is done on the points that form the trajectory and the control commands are obtained using inverse dynamics and hence inaccurate. General numerical optimization methods, such as sequential quadratic programming, can be used for this type of optimization. On the other hand, shooting methods use the control commands as decision variables, and the vehicle states are obtained by forward simulating the system's dynamics equation. This allows the, the use of more efficient methods, such as ILQR, to solve the trajectory planning problem. The advantage of the trajectory optimization method is that it can yield a locally optimal solution. However, they require an initial guess to start the optimization. The quality of this initial solution affects how fast the algorithm converges. This can lead to variable runtime of the trajectory planning, which can be problematic in safety critical scenarios. Another set of methods are based on sampling in which a set of trajectories are sampled and evaluated and the best one is selected for execution. In such methods, the behavioral decisions not only affect the objective function, but also can guide the sampling process so that the majority of the sample trajectories align with the high level behavioral goal. As an example, one popular method is to generate a set of longitudinal and lateral trajectories relative to a center line by sampling n conditions and fitting a polynomial. Each pair of the longitudinal and lateral trajectories can then be converted to a full vehicle trajectory. Here, the set of sampled n conditions can be restricted to a certain region on the lane, for example, before the stop line, and specific ranges of velocity, for example, zero velocity for stopping behavior and speed limit velocity for cruising behavior. In the case of more complex behaviors, multiple meet conditions are sampled to form several polynomials that are stitched together and create a more complex trajectory. Another trajectory sampling approach is the rapidly exploring random trees in which a tree of trajectories 
is iteratively expanded based on randomly sampled states and a steering function that simulates moving from one node in the graph towards the sample point. Similarly, in this method, the sampling can be guided by the behavioral decisions. The strength of these sampling methods is that the creation and evaluation of trajectories are highly parallelizable and any form of cons function can be used to evaluate these trajectories. However, the final trajectory might not, might not be the optimal trajectory, but suboptimal. Also, a good sampling strategy is required to achieve a good performance. Looking back at the behavior and trajectory planning steps, we can see that it is possible that the decisions between the two components are not consistent. This is likely due to the fact that at each step, different objective functions are being optimized. Such inconsistencies can be avoided by performing joint behavior and trajectory planning. We have shown that by using the same representation of behavior and trajectory, we can use the exact same objective function in the two steps, reducing the chance of decision mismatch. Next, we talk about control. Up to now, we have seen how the motion planner iteratively replans a trajectory that considers the latest information. Even though the trajectory may contain control commands, that construct the trajectory, a controller is needed to track incoming trajectories and send actuation commands to the vehicle at high frequency. This is because the vehicle models that are used in the previous steps are simplified models, and the use of more complicated models can increase the computational complexity. Furthermore, there are many external disturbances that can influence the vehicle's motion and hence, what is commanded to the vehicle may not be 100% achieved. Therefore, a high frequency feedback loop is required to constantly recompute actuation commands based on the current state of the vehicle to track the trajectories. One such strategy for a controller is to try to decrease the error in following a reference path. For example, in pure pursuit, a semicircle is fit through the current state of the vehicle and a reference point on the path with a fixed lookout distance. The curvature of such a circle can be mapped to a steering angle of the vehicle. Note that in this method, the vehicle is only considering a goal point and ignoring the rest of the reference path. An alternative is to use feedback variables based on the rear wheel positions. In this, in this approach, the difference between the current heading and the tangent on the closest point on the path, as well as the distance to it, is used to generate the steering commands. Note that in this method, accurate curvature of the path is required to reason about the derivatives of the heading error. Another line of control approaches are model predictive control. Given the planned trajectory, which is a sequence of states, a sequence of control variables is found such that the resulting unrolled trajectory minimizes the error with respect to the original trajectory. However, instead of a simplified kinematic model, a more accurate dynamic model of the vehicle is used that takes into account some of the physical properties of the vehicle. Note that this can be done efficiently due to the short horizon and a simple cost function. The resulting control commands, such as throttle, brake, or steering rate, can then be tracked using a PID controller. By constantly repeating such a process, the SDV will execute the commanded trajectories closely.